So actually I had a presentation, but I don't think I will use it because I'll just sit here and, and do some show. <coughs> yeah, it's much funnier anyway. <laughs> so how many of you actually created like uh, C-sharp functions? You are able, yeah. Did you know this uh, when you created, when you was describing the actual, so C sharp method functions is a method you create, and then it has parameters to the to the method, and above that you had proper attributes, which pointed down. You had to write the name of the parameter, and that had to be in the attribute. I mean, so this is new. This function parameter. It's not in the C1 core yet. I hope it will be soon. Um, but this one, this attribute works on, on pure properties. Um, uh, <clears throat> so for the user control functions, um, it's just reused. So basically, if, if I create, see, I have <clears throat> my other project here. And I have some snippets. That's always good. Okay. This one I just close. And this one was mine. Okay. So I have this Omnicorp site running. And uh, down here we have some missing functions. So this is what it would look like if you actually made a function call, which is not there. Um, uh, so you get these red boxes. And one of these is arrow, the function name composite search, single, simple page search, search form is not known. And that's because I actually deleted it. This is normally XSLT function from the starter site. <clears throat> so what I have instead is, so here I have the folder structure, we'll make up the namespace. And here I have an ACX file called search form. So when I drop this into my app data folder, um, uh, the function should appear. Mm -mm. So if I have no pen. Whoa. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Da, 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 da. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay, so this is a normal access user control file that many people probably, I mean, there's nothing special to it except there's these opening brackets. So this is .NET, S.NET, um, a web form syntax for accessing some code variable. <clears throat> and these code variables I have in my code behind file. Maybe I should just open the Visual Studio. So here we have we see exactly the same as in Razor. So there's this function parameter attribute, and we have this public string get set. Um, so these will show up as parameters to my function, and they are accessible um, uh, in my ACX file because yeah, that's the way it works. <coughs> so what I will do is I will take this folder. <coughs> This is not mine. This one. I'll open this in Windows Explorer. Yeah, so when you install the package, you will get a folder here called user control. Um, when I drop it in here, C1 should be able to pick it up. And I refresh the page. Now we don't have the arrow anymore. Um, so this is also an example of the abstraction of function, call, function names and their implementation. C1 doesn't care if it's a XLC, Razor, user control, or whatever, as long as you have a function named that with the correct parameters. <coughs> yeah, so when I say function name, I, I always refer to the complete path, but yeah, <laughs> namespace and, and function name. The full name. <coughs> um, uh, yeah. 
So, and down here, so that was very quick, how user control works, and, and it just works. This. So that was actually finished. Then you will win the prize for Shaw's presentation. I guess. <laughs> But I mean, web forms is not at all. I mean, this there's no auto-generated HTML in this web form, for instance. And and this and with HTML helpers in Razor, you can again get auto-generated HTML for you. So it's not. Um, it's the whole idea of lifecycle and postback, and you have unload, on init, on pre-render, all these um, uh, terminology you have in web forms that you don't have in a Razor. A Razor executes from Top to bottom, that's it. Um, uh, while in web forms, you can hook into the whole life cycle. <laughs> the developers, Windows, uh, developers, Windows developers, you that are used to doing C sharp uh, uh, Windows applications using uh, web forms. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's definitely still a, a target audience. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you get. Yeah, so so that's a bit, so that's nothing, so that's uh, not specific for uh, user control functions, but it's something that came all the way from the master pages implementation. So uh, those of you who are familiar with master pages from the contribution project, um, is there a, f a few uh, helper controls, like Afternet controls, that you can insert on your page that have these run at server on them? And one of them is called um, f colon function. Um, uh, and then it takes a name and it just say run at server. That name is a function name in C1, um, which the, when the page renders executes, it will go and grab that function, executes it, and put it in. <laughs> No, the user control. So web forms in itself is not able to, to. It doesn't know about Razor, so it has to go back to C1, and then. So what you would do is like say f. Um, uh, function, name, and then it will be a name. Where the Razor function is, uh, so for here it will be, examples. And then maybe. So what I mean, it was more like the F HTML, the helper functions inside there. Uh, <laughs> the helper functions that you have in Razor? Yeah, it's, it's no. like you uh, download and accelerate the uh, web controls for MVC, mm. uh, then they have a list, uh, tab control, and all that. Yeah, then I would create a, a, a wrapper, your own Razor function that has that HTML helper in it. Re register as a C1 function, then go back to user control, and then uh, write this where you say my Telerik wrapper. No, and actually one of the yeah. one of the cool um, in, in on Stack Overflow actually there's a lot of people asking how do I execute Razor in my web form? And the normal answer is, you can't. But it does that larger than percentage of people should be able to access the code line and the code object. Is that dependent on a Razor request? 
I don't know if you actually, how many looked at this source code. Um, but this is how we execute a racer function. So basically this is what you could do in your web forms. So what we do here is, uh, if you have the path to the CS HTML file, you can create an instance from it, then you get an object. And then that object, you create a web page context, then you can have a string builder, because Razor just returns strings, nothing else. And then you have the web page object instantiated up here, and you then say execute page hierarchy into that string builder you have. Um, as what I would say is, in, if you're sitting in C1 anyway, just create a Razor function that calls the HTML helper, and that function you can call from your user control. Otherwise, you would implement this part of code yourself. But yeah, this is beautiful code. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how we are able to uh, execute a Razor function without HTTP context. It's actually the guys sitting at the table down there who wrote that implementation of, of a no HTTP Razor context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Okay, I'm finished.